Okay, welcome back to another pixel art tutorial. Um, this is more of a, I mean, it's gonna uh, it's gonna hi be hi kind of highlighting graphics too, and a script I wrote. But in general, I'd like to kind of show a technique for creating points that are equally spaced around a center point and kind of at a fixed distance from each other. So, I think to showcase this, what I'd first like to do is I would like to kind of make something that you would find very hard or nearly impossible to do in pixel art isometric. Uh, pixel art isometric isn't true isometric, it's actually diametric. Um, if it were true isometric, it would be, when you draw a cube, it would be a perfect hexagon. And so pixel art isometric is diametric, and I think I'm just going to refer to it as, as as diametric from now on because it makes the draftsman inside me scream to call it isometric. Okay, anyway, what I'd like to do is start by drawing a building that's a pentagon shape, which would be very hard to do normally by eyeballing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create um, a brush. Well, actually, I'll just do a dot, I guess, and I'll capture that. Let me zoom in here. And I'm just going to use my right, um, uh, my right mouse button to copy it and fill in where it was. So let's, let's note down here you'll see the X and Y position of the cursor. So I'm looking at where I want the central point for this to be and it looks like 320 by 450 will work fine. So I'm going to go into the brush effects and factory and I'm going to right click and here's a polar copy Lua script I wrote. Um, shoot, well, <laughs> I forgot the center point while I was talking. So we'll go three, 300 by 300 by 450. Okay. Uh, 300 for the X and 450 for the Y. These X and Y are the center point of our um, circular array copy of items. Now in pixel art diametric you're going to have the X radius of a perfect circle looking downward and you know distorted in that view is going to be basically double the height. So the X radius we're going to have, uh, I'm going to make it a smaller building, so it's going to be 50 for the radius on the X radius, and the Y radius should probably be 25. Remember it's double width, essentially. And number of copies, we want five copies, remember five points in a pentagon, now the rotation offset is what angle all those are rotated at once once they're kind of calculated. And we want basically 90 degrees points down in, in the coordinate system for my script. So you have 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 up top. We want 90 because we want that tip to point downward. The center dot's an option just um, to put a center dot in the middle of these so you can kind of line them up if you're doing different copies and stuff. So let's see what this does. You can see that now we have a pentagon shape in isometric and this would be very hard to eyeball and get correct. So now what I'd like to do is I'm going to draw the lines between these and connect them into that pentagon shape. So I'm going to hit L for my line tool and I'm just going to start uh, this is where you want to be precise. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy half this. Yeah, that's all I'll do. I'll grab half of it. Brush. And I'll hit the X key to mirror along the X, and then I've got that center dot to line up. All right. I'm going to hit delete key to bring this back to the, the original brush. And you'll see that this pentagon shape would be very hard to draw or to eyeball in isometric or pixel art diametric. So now let's grab a copy of this. But first what I want to do is go to my line tool. And I'm going to draw, kind of look at the height that I want here, right? I'm going to go straight up here. And I'll go about that high. And then I'm going to grab this again with a brush tool. Okay, and I'll just put it there. That should work zooming out a little bit and I'll hit delete here and we'll go back into I wonder I wonder if my palette oops let me look like this 
Okay, so it is. Um, if you ever can't see the graphical user interface guidelines and stuff, go into your palette and hit the delete key and it'll remap these four. And that'll basically make it so you can you can see what you're drawing there. So I want to go and I want to pick, basically, I'm just going to start connecting these. Ooh, let me make sure I'm in the line tool. U for undo, L for line. And I would just start I'm using this color here just so you can see, you know, you'd want to use the color that matches in the real world. Or, I mean, <laughs> in the real world. You want to use the color that matches when you're drawing these. I'm just doing this for the sake of drawing so you can kind of see the li new lines I'm drawing. And now you'd have a building that's, you know, actually a pentagon, and that would be very rare to see in the uh, in the diametric pixel art world. So we can put a roof on this if we want by connecting these lines to this top. You gotta have a steady hand to do this because you want to make sure you're grabbing the right pixel every time. I'm going to use a brush to copy this, so I'll hit B for brush, and I'll hit X to flip along the X axis, and there you go. And I can hit delete on this. Now, um, basically, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. That you know, this is a very a very powerful technique when you want to draw things that would normally be hard, but all you need to do is you have to know a radius for x, y, and a central point. Um, you, you can imagine, you know, if you wanted to draw, let me do a line here. If you wanted to do a door like here, well, the question now is how do I get this slant? And I know that this slant needs to line up. So if I go to my brushes and I kind of use this top deal that we've already drawn, I can bring this down. And what do you know? I can get the top of that door the delete key and then make sure I'm there and now you know you could chip away until you get the door out actually all I have to do is hit shift more for that rectangle and you can kind of see you know you wouldn't see the back stuff after a while but you can see that's how you get your door so this part matches this part and now we basically have something that'd be you know rather rather hard to eyeball now, there's a lot of people that that go into art and they use it as an escape from learning you know they might say well I've been good at all my art all my life and it's an escape from mathematics but there's a point that some of us really want to draw with a lot of precision and this is the kind of thing that that helps with that let me show another example and this is long-winded you're welcome to skip through it as you want I'm just going to uh, clear this let's say you're drawing a clock and you know you're drawing a face on you know clock and it has 12 sections in it. Well, once again, this kind of tool comes in handy. Polar copy. Let me make sure I have uh, let me make sure I have a brush here or something that I can uh, and I don't know why I have I can't use the normal drawing tool. It seems like I always have to copy it as a brush first. I'm not sure why that is. I don't claim to know everything about this program, but I know a good amount. So we'll go back into my polar copy here. And we'll do 250 by what was it, 300 or something, 400? I don't remember. 350, something like that. Um, we're going to do 50. Now, because we're not drawing an ellipse this time, or you know, ellipt elliptically spaced dots, they're going to be both the x and y uh, radius are the same. And number of copies, we've got 12 hours in a day, so we'll do 12. And this is, I wonder if I should do. No, I don't need to do 90 for this because there's a group of four. So, okay, let me zoom out on this. You can see that uh, go up a little bit. And you can use your arrow keys too to kind of navigate around um, left and right when you have something like this. But now you can see that I have a tick for each hour of the day. And if I want to go to my circle tool here, I'll go to empty circle, grab the center here. And you can see now if I wanted to make a clock or, you know, a wagon wheel or whatever, I have a guide point to position those hours or those spokes. You know, if you're making a wagon wheel, you know, you have a good way to position the spokes on that. So that's just kind of a, a, a an example of why math is important even in art. Because there comes a time that you want to draw with some precision or you want to pioneer a new, more precise pixel art. Um, diametric view that people haven't seen and you'll amaze your friends they will say how did you get that that you know that pentagon pyramid to look so good well you know you calculated the points 
and there's nothing magic about you know these calculations either in fact oops here's the formula and I'll kind of break this down for you about how this is used if I can get uh, let me shrink this up a little bit here oh it disappeared where did my text editor go I don't believe in editing video so I'll probably just <laughs> leave that in anyway so I'll break these variables down and you don't have to be a programmer to do this. This is like high school mathematics, if not middle school. So your endpoint X and your endpoint Y, that's going to be this final position here of each one of these dots. Now the center X, center X and center Y is going to be this position here, the X and Y position. Now to find each one of these X, to find the X coordinate of each one of these, you go the cosine of the angle. Now the angle is the angle from the center to that point there, plus the rotation. Now that rotation is the total rotation that all these get rotated by. And then the radius x is the distance from here to here. And the radius y is the distance from here to here. And depending on, you know, if this x and y change or are different, that's going to give you either a tall ellipse or a wide ellipse and these spaced around there. So I hope that makes sense. I'll try and post the script for this too. If you don't have graphics too, but you would still like this kind of functionality, um, one good option is you can consider, you know, writing a small program. If you have one of those TI-83 calculators, you could write a program that asks for the number of points, the rotation, and everything else, and then just spits out a pair of these as output. Or you could even make a spreadsheet if you feel more comfortable. If you're, you know, if you're not a programmer and you can do these calculations in a spreadsheet to enter so many into a cell and then keep changing the degrees for each point you want. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I would encourage you to always be looking for ways to improve your art, whether that's through mathematics or you know maybe color study and all these different areas. Don't feel that art is something that has to be sacred and held up by its own and an escape from learning other things. I would encourage people to go out, learn new things, and then drag that back to your art and try to apply something new. So. I hope everybody has a good morning, evening, day, whatever time it is, and keep doing art.